Hello everybody and welcome back to the Crumbs and Doily store here in Soho where we have reopened again and thank you to all of you who have been in to say hi to get yourself some cupcakes and cookies it's been so ace having you all back and if you're in London doing any Christmas shopping then do make sure you pop in for a little sweet treat to pick you up to get you on your way to finishing your Christmas shopping this year so it is nearly Christmas which means today's recipe has got to be something Christmassy and this is for a Yule log something we have never done for you here on YouTube before and it's one of those things that I think a lot of people get a little bit scared of because you've got to roll it up like a Swiss roll right and that can be quite daunting because you want to get maximum swirl but minimal cracking so this recipe is the perfect recipe for that I guarantee you are not going to get any cracks in this and you're going to get a gorgeous gorgeous swirl going on and also Christmas for me I don't know about you but it's all about eating as much as you possibly possibly can so you've got to be a little bit tactical about how much food you can get in and a Yule log you know sometimes you think oh cake I'm not sure I can manage cake on Christmas Day but this Yule log is so light it's almost like eating air it's gonna be like a chocolatey chiffon style sponge so pretty much air and then we're gonna fill it with cream which we're gonna whip again air and then we're gonna coat it in ganache but we're gonna whip it it's gonna be a whipped ganache which you might not have done before but trust me it is absolutely delicious and it's full of air. So this is basically like eating chocolate air. You are gonna love it, and it is gonna go down perfectly this Christmas for you. So the very first thing we need to do today is get our tin ready. Um, and when you look for like your log or Swiss roll recipes, I tell you to use a Swiss roll pan. Don't worry, you do not need one of those. I'm gonna do it in a regular baking tray. You do need one that has kind of sides to it though. So it's just a very shallow kind of cake tin I suppose. I'll give you measurements for this in the description box below so you can look for one about this size and we're going to line it with greaseproof paper so first of all just give it a light spray with some cake spray or a little bit of oil like this and now we're going to put a nice layer of greaseproof on and as you can see I have cut little squares out of the corner now this is my top tip for this because you can push your greaseproof in and you don't have anything folding over the corners so you're not going to get any kind of creases in there so just flatten the sides off get your nail in there just so it's nice and sharp and now one more thing I'm going to do before we start getting our sponge ready is I'm just going to give this again a very very light spray this is just going to help us kind of get the cake off it at the other end so tray can go to one side and we can get on with making our cake so like I said it's a chiffon style sponge so I've separated six eggs and we're going to whip them up separately so we get maximum air going on in this cake so in here I've got six large egg yolks and I'm going to add in 120 20 grams of caster sugar and we're going to start whisking this on a nice high speed I like to use a hand whisk for this because it's going to take about four minutes but as usual please don't stick too strictly to the timings for these you want to look at what it's looking like and the consistency and the texture and I'll show you what that needs to look like now as you can see that egg has gone from a gorgeous yellow into this really pale color here and look how thick it is as well it's really really gooey in there and that's going to add lovely texture to our sponge so next we need to add some cocoa powder so I've got 50 grams here which I'm going to put through a sieve along with a little pinch of salt as well and now I'm going to grab a spatula and I'm going to stir this to make a really thick paste and finally to this we're going to add a little drop of vanilla maybe around half a teaspoonful oh that came out pretty fast <laughs> and stir that through and then we're just going to leave this to one side whilst we get on with whisking our egg whites so the six egg whites that I have are in my stand mixer over here with a balloon attachment and we're going to start by mixing this on a low speed just to break down the egg whites so you're going to break them down before we start creating loads of air so once you start to see some large bubbles forming it's time to turn it up so we're going to go up to a pretty high speed and we're going to keep it whisking until we get to a soft peak Once you've got to a soft peak stage we're going to add in 30 grams of caster sugar just do it gradually just so that the egg white can incorporate it without collapsing 
and then we're going to keep it whisking until we get to a stiff peak. Okay, so let's take a look at this egg white. There we go. If I was feeling brave, I'd put this hey, upside down. <laughs> so now what we need to do is incorporate these two. So we've got our egg whites, which are really light and fluffy. There's loads of air in there. We need to be very gentle with it. And then we've got this really stiff chocolatey paste. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get a very small amount of the egg white, about one large spoonful going in here. And we're gonna mix this in and we're gonna do it fairly vigorously. We're not gonna try too carefully to fold it. What we wanna do is just loosen up this chocolatey batter. So now that this is loosened up a little bit here, we're gonna add in more egg white. We're gonna do maybe two more additions. So put in a nice big dollop like so. And now it is time to fold this very carefully because we want this air from the egg white, okay? So one thing you can do to help is to use a metal spoon like this one because a metal spoon, I mean, you can't really see because it's covered in goo, but it's got a very sharp, thin edge here. So it's gonna cut through the egg white nice and easily, whereas a, a spatula or a wooden spoon is just gonna break all those air bubbles up. So we're gonna fold this and it's gonna probably take quite a long time, but do have patience because it's all worth it, okay? So just cut through the middle, scoop round the sides, folding all the way. So once your first lot is mixed through, we can go in with the rest of it. So just dollop it all on top and we'll do the exact same thing. And once you've got rid of all those little white flecks of egg white, it is time to pour it into our pan. So what we wanna do is just pour it all in and spread it out. So as you're leveling out your cake, you still wanna be really, really careful not to knock any of the air out of it because the air is what's gonna give us that gorgeous light sponge and we're gonna be able to roll it without getting any cracks in it. And by the way, this is not one of those recipes when you can use your favorite chocolate sponge because that's not gonna work. You need to do the sponge. So trust me and go with me. And it's time to get this in the oven. So my oven is preheated to 170 degrees C. We're gonna put it in for about 10 minutes. So it doesn't take very long to bake because as you can see, it's very, very, thin so we'll have a look at it in 10 minutes and see what it's looking like okay so let's just test this sponge with our fingertips yeah, that's looking good, it's bouncing back. So now what we're gonna do is cool this down for about two minutes, okay, because we want to roll this uh, Yule log when it's warm because if we leave it to cool down and then we try and roll it up It's gonna have set and it's probably gonna crack So we're gonna do it when it's warm because it's more pliable. It's more flexible and then we're gonna leave it to cool um, And then when we unroll it and try and re-roll it once we filled it It will have remembered that kind of roll. I hope that makes sense <laughs> But trust me, it's gonna work. So what I've got here is a tea towel because this is what we're gonna roll it up in And I'm just gonna dust it with a tiny little bit of icing sugar and this is just gonna help it from sticking Okay, let's get our cake back so as you can see it sort of sunk down a little bit that's a-okay and also the sides are starting to pull in again that's what we were supposed to happen so the first thing we're going to do is very gently release the cake from the edges of the paper I find that best to do it with this palette knife but you could do it with um, just a regular knife as well just very gently pulling the paper away just a little bit at a time so you don't tear the cake Okay, and now it's the scary part. We need to flip this out. It's not actually that scary. Have conviction and confidence. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> and there we 
go. So now again, we need to very gently peel this off. We don't want to do it too quickly because it might break. So grab the edge and just very gently peel it back like this. All right, let's get rolling. So we're gonna roll it this way so we get maximum swirl going on. And what we're gonna do first is turn the edge of the tea towel over and then we're gonna put that just on top of the cake. And this way it's gonna make it easier for us to roll. So very gently turn it over and then just keep on rolling very gently. This is so satisfying. <laughs> I love doing this. Here we go. Et voila! And now we need to leave this in its tea towel to cool down completely so that it remembers that shape. So whilst it cools down over here, we're gonna get on with making our ganache, which is gonna go on the outside of our cake. So in this bowl here, I've got 200 grams of chocolate chips and I'm gonna add to it 100 grams of butter. And then we're gonna put those in the microwave or you can do it over a bain marie. You just wanna melt them until they're completely combined. And then to this, we are gonna add 100 grams of cream, double cream preferably. So pour it all in and give it a good stir to combine. Before we whip this up, because remember, this is gonna be whipped ganache, we need to let it cool down completely. I prefer to do this just at room temperature, but you can, if you're in a hurry, you can put it in the fridge. But if you are doing that, just give it a stir every now and again, because the outside is gonna stiffen up and the inside's gonna be kind of melted still. So you just wanna make sure that it is cooling down at the same rate. So I'm gonna give it about 15, 20 minutes, and by that time, this will have cooled down, and so will our cake, and then we can get back we can unroll it, we can fill it, we can ice it, and then we can eat it. All right, 20 minutes is up, and if we look at this ganache, we can see it's got a lot thicker. Can you see here? And it's a lot more spreadable. You could probably just about ice a cake with this. So now we can whip it up. Um, you probably could do it with a whisk like this, but it might take you a long time. So if you've got an electric one, then do use that. And we're just gonna whip it for a couple of minutes and you'll see how lovely and whippy it goes. This, honestly, like whipping ganache is kind of one of those secrets I feel we've kept from you. <laughs> it's so, so good. And when we were talking about what we were gonna ice this cake with, we thought buttercream, you can, and if you love buttercream, then do by all means ice it with buttercream. But for me, it's a little bit sweet and I want this to be kind of decadent. And this whipped ganache is like silky and smooth and mousse-like but super decadent at the same time. So what we're gonna do is leave that to one side and get on with the filling, which is simply gonna be a Chantilly cream with a little bit of brandy in. So I've got some double cream here and I'm gonna whisk it. And I'm gonna whisk it by hand because it doesn't really take all that long and you get a little bit more control over it because sometimes if we're using the electric whisk, it can go too far very quickly um, and it's hard to get it back. So we wanna make sure this is really smooth. So I'm doing it by hand. So when your cream is ever so nearly there, but it's still a bit loose, I'm gonna go in with about a tablespoon of icing sugar that I've already sifted. And this is just gonna sweeten it a little bit, help to stabilize it as well. So then keep on whisking until it thickens a bit more. And 
And then we're gonna add in just a little splash of brandy. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but brandy to me is like the ultimate Christmas flavor. So about a teaspoon or so in there, and I'm just gonna stir it through with a spoon. The brandy also makes it go so silky. Like, look at it, it's beautiful. Okay, it is time. Let's see if our cake has worked already. So very carefully, we're gonna unroll it. And when you start to see the cake appear, <laughs> where is it? Here it is. Just make sure it's not stuck. So go nice and slowly, use your hand if you need to kind of help ease it off. And this is so far looking so good. And if you get to the end and it's still feeling a little bit warm in the center, roll it back up and let it cool down a bit more. And remember, be careful at the end there. Okay, so now we're gonna fill it with this cream. So what I'm gonna do is dollop it all over and then spread it because we don't wanna keep working the cream. If we keep working, it will keep over whipping it. So little dollops all over our sponge. And then as usual, spreading it out with a little offset palette knife, just pushing into the sponge. It's a very forgiving sponge though. It's not gonna kind of crumble and tear. Now, as you can see, I haven't gone all the way to the edge yet. So what I'm gonna do here is just spread it quite thin because we want the center of our roll to be really swirly and a nice tight roll. So the key here is to not put too much filling in the center. And now it is time to re-roll this. So back we go, but this time obviously we're not gonna put the tea towel inside. We're gonna fold the first bit in like this, and then we're gonna use the tea towel to kind of help us make the first couple of rolls. Just work your hands all the way down the Swiss roll. And once it's started and you feel like it's doing the right thing, get rid of the tea towel and just use your hands to roll it back up and look, there is not a single crack on this cake. Ta-da! I told you, it's not gonna crack. So now we can ice this. I'm gonna do it onto this board here. You can do it on any kind of plate that you want to. And we're gonna pick it up, but remember, it's a very kind of uh, pliable sponge, so it's not gonna be too difficult. Just try and grab as much of it as you can when you pick it up. And if you wanted to, you could just ice it like this, but I'm gonna make it look a little bit more log-like. So I'm going to cut a very small bit of the cake off the end at a little angle like this. Oh yeah, baby, look at that perfect swirl going on there. So with this little bit here, I'm just gonna stick it about there just to make it look a little bit more log-like, you know? And now we can ice it with our delicious whipped ganache. And I am going to, as usual, again, use my trusty offset palette knife, just because you get a lot of control with this little guy. And just a bit by bit, pop it on and cover your cake. I don't know what you think, but I think that looks just like a log. <laughs> now, if you wanted to use the kind of fork and get that, you know, that classic Yule log look on it, you can, but I quite like this. I think it looks a little bit more actually like a tree. And you know what will make it look even more like a tree? And I cannot take any credit for this. This was literally Sam's idea. Um, and as usual, he was right. I made these little meringues here that are mushrooms because that's what you get in the woodlands. And we did it with just using a classic French meringue that we piped out in these two halves, dusted with cocoa powder and stuck them together with chocolate. And I'm just gonna put a couple of these on my cake. Cute, 
out. I really like this and it was really easy to make. You know, it might feel a little bit stressful doing the whole rolling thing, but it's actually not. Follow this recipe and you're gonna have a perfect Yule log this Christmas. But we had better just check that it tastes right, huh? So let's take a nice slice. It is so pleasing when you get that swirl on your cake. Okay, let's give this a go. Got to get it all. What did I say? It's like eating air. Chocolatey, delicious air. It is so, so light. And then it's just gonna slide down on Christmas day so that you can keep packing in the pigs in blankets, the leftover turkey. Mm. And it looks fantastic. If you bring this out on Christmas Day, your family or your friends or whoever you're spending Christmas with this year is going to think that this is the best thing they've ever seen. So enjoy making this. I cannot wait to see how yours goes. So please do tag me and um, Gemma over on Instagram. I'm Sally Dells and of course at Cupcake Gemma and use the tag hashtag Cupcake Gemma so we can all see your photos. We have one more video left guys before Christmas. Um, no, we don't, we have two because we have one on Christmas Eve as well. So we'll have some more Christmassy things coming your way. But uh, keep baking, keep tagging us. Come and see us here in Soho as well because we can't wait to see you guys here. And we've got some brand new cookie flavors in store as well. We've got the Christmas flavor, which Dane and I showed you a few weeks ago, as well as a cherry chocolate black forest cookie with cacao nibs all over it and it's delicious and you can only get it in store. So do head on down and we will see you soon. So bye for now. <gasps> mm.